Hey traders, 1st of November, Krishna Joshi here from 7 Points Capital and this is my second video in this Trader Takeaway series. Let's quickly jump on to SPY which is the S&P 500 ETF and this is the daily on it as you can see SPY has just made a new all time high 258.43. Uh, the volume not really up there uh, but it's so much better than some of these low volume days that we've had in the last month or so. So we'll jump on to a few stocks that were really active on the day. Uh, some that announced earnings today and some of them which are still in play from yesterday. So my first stock on the day that I was watching was US Steel, one of the biggest steel companies. And they announced earnings today pre-market. And the interesting thing about this was that AK Steel, which is another uh, a slightly smaller steel company, but they announced earnings yesterday, which were very bad numbers. The stock was down over 20%. Whereas U.S. Steel came up with really good numbers because of higher pricing and they had a lot of efficiency in the operations. So let me show you the daily. The stock gapped up a lot. This one, it went down in sympathy with AK Steel, assuming that uh, the traders probably hit this stock too, assuming maybe they'll have poor set of numbers like AK Steel. Uh, because similar companies, the peer companies usually have same kind of operational uh, operational uh, flow and even in terms of pricing. Now looking at the intraday setup, the stock as you can see really gapped up. This is the five minute on uh, US Steel and the stock gapped up uh, continued in fact from after hours yesterday and the stock was strong all day. And now like I mentioned, uh, I wasn't directly trading US Steel uh, which is the ticker X but I was using it to trade AK Steel which is AKS and AKS was short seller restriction from yesterday. So the morning pop in this one was a good opportunity to get long in AK Steel and the same trade was to get short in AK Steel instead of directly trading US Steel. And this that's a good correlation trade that we usually have. And this is the five minute on AK Steel. You can see similar pattern. This was the closing in AK Steel US Steel numbers come out and the stock looks all good. And let me show you the opening in AK Steel. There we go. This is the morning pop that I was talking about. Uh, it coincided with the pop in US Steel. And this was a really good setup where I was probably buying uh, 76 and 77 on the offer. Uh, somewhere around here. And this was a clean move right up. And this, this trade was clearly off US Steel. And similarly, the setup around, so you saw like a topping tail in, in US Steel, you saw a topping tail in AK Steel. In fact, AK Steel felt like it was really getting overextended, as you can see around the 90s here. And uh, the pressure, book pressure kind of changed. So every time the stock flipped up one cent, it looked really good, favored up all the way from the 80s up until the 90s. But right around this point, right around 91, 92, that wasn't the case. So quickly I started, I tried to trim, uh, get out of my long position and I wasn't really quick on getting on to the short position around the 90s but I remember getting 87s, uh, 86 and 85s and all the way down and this was again a really good trade and this was based off uh, US Steel completely. This was right around here. So this, uh, this move in AK Steel was really uh, week, uh, you can see around 9.45, let me show 9.49 to be exact in AK Steel and US Steel kind of had a topping move as well at just around 9.48, 9.49. This is the 4.92 level in AK Steel looking like a similar pattern there and AK Steel just sold off completely and in fact it kept following the week trend all day long. There you go. Uh, one thing that I could have done differently in this setup was probably uh, I, I could have stayed with it much longer but only because my trade was based off US Steel and US Steel came up to make a double top around there which is why I had to, I had to take uh, I had to book profits in this one. Uh, the best trade would have been ideal execution would be to stay in it as long as it keeps going but there's definitely a lot of uh, change in the book pressure on the level 2 that you could see which is why I booked the profits around 74, 73s. And it was it was really easy to get out of the trade. It was still a good 10, 12 uh, cents trade uh, given I was just risking about 3 cents from my initial point of entry. I got in about 87s as 
as client do not give it beyond 490 in AKT. So that ended up being a really good trade uh, on the short side, but this would have been much nicer as well. So that was one good trade uh, in AK Steel, which was day two on the stock. PBI, uh, the stock has been weak for most quarters. This this looks like MAT, like every every quarter you can see big down. So last three out of four quarters, you see gap down on the stock, except for this exception on this one. And this is again the fifth quarter. So four out of five quarters, that stock just gaps down on earnings. Uh, let us jump on to intraday so I can give you a better idea about how the stock went. I remember the level was about 12, 15 was a really good setup. Right around this one, this was a perfect entry. Felt like I was chasing it, but looking at the book pressure right around here, I was really risking only about, only I couldn't get into my full size because I was getting in the stock probably 15, 20 cents lower. But this was a really tight setup. This is like a one, two, three setup where it just got one, two, and then you see another follow through. So this was a really good setup for me. Uh, a continuation trade. You could probably look at it as a bear flag, uh, a down move sideways. You can see a wedge formation and then uh, it just collapses from the 12, 14. I remember taking it, it got really flashy around here. I think I remember getting out around the 97s, 98s. Uh, I did trim some early on, probably uh, in the 1205s, like below 1210. So this ended up being a good trade. Uh, I wasn't really looking to get involved here because it was too flashy. In fact, if you couldn't get the offer and if you had a stop out there, you would get stopped out probably 7, 8 cents higher. So I was trying to stay away from these ones up until it really got clean again. And there was one trade again where right around the close 330. After 3.30, the stock got really tight into a one cent channel. It already did a down move where it tried to uh, wake, uh, shake you out and then it just went sideways for a few for a few minutes. And this was a good entry again. You're just trying to risk about four cents on the trade. My stop was below 53, uh, I think it was 52 and 53 because I was long 57s. And this ended up being a good trade. Uh, two to one, not really big, but right around the close, this was a trade where I was able to uh, the probability on these kind of setups is close to 80% for me and which is why even 2 to 1 was a good trade. So I could size in into this position and I could in fact have a good execution where I was able to uh, trim around 63, 64s on the way up. Uh, these are two good trades on the day that kind of worked for me. Uh, let me show you another trade that was not a good trade. Uh, we often say look at and focus only on the good trades. So today I want to talk about this trade, easy setup that I really missed. I've been watching MAT, which was day two because it was short seller restricted yesterday. If you remember my first video, this is in fact the fourth day on the stock. This was earnings uh, gap down, which closed really strong. We were bullish on it. Then we made a couple of good strong setups. Uh, let me go on to intraday to give you an idea. Not really, selling's not that responsive. Let me let me see if I can go back again. I right, that's about it. It gives me. Yeah, so this was day two. This is the 60 minute chart. Close at the highs. Uh, we were really bu uh, bullish on the stock. We were long uh, all day from about 1320 in it, and uh, we got the breakout. It closed at the highs, and then it rallied almost 10% the next day. I, and on day three, it sold off 10% and it closed flow, uh, around the 1420. If you look at the VWAP or the volume profile, the 14 area was really significant. And this is where it spent most of the time intraday today, up until 3.30 where the stock just collapsed. It just tanked literally. You can see this is the five minute and look at these bars. It's it's hardly, it's, a, it's in a one cent channel for about, I don't know, for more than 60 minutes and then the stock just collapses from 1390 to 1355. That's about a 35 cents, which is 3% move in a very short span of time. And this was one of the easier trades that we that we all love to execute at seven points. And this is something that goes down in my journal that I should be focusing more on these kind of stocks. And hopefully I can do better next time. 
and the best way to do that would be record it down into my journal so this was one bad trade because I really missed it and uh, uh, Mike saw me at the end of the at the close and he told me uh, well, what's wrong I said I, I hate missing I hate the fact that I missed MAT uh, but this is this is again a learning experience and hopefully we can do much better next time and one trade that I did partially do well but I could have still done better so uh, from now on I want to organize my videos into the best setups where we saw AK Steel and TBI uh, a bad setup which was MAT and this is the third category that I want to focus which would be uh, I could have done much better in these kind of stocks so third category FTR but I partially did fine but uh, there's still room for improvement so you can see the stock kept bouncing off uh, the 9-10 level it had earnings it, it, has, it has had poor earnings uh, the stock did a reverse split if you look at the daily this looks similar to uh, like dry shifts all the way down not as terrible as dry shifts but it's definitely one of the weaker stocks out there and so the stock was down this is the 15 minute on the stock <coughs> stock gaps down a good continuation and let it uh, and I kind of let it bounce off instead of trying to focus on the long side or trying to catch the timing on the short side I kept looking for a tight setup where I could have a much more controlled risk reward and which is why 9.10 level, $9.10 became really key. Uh, the stop loss initially when I got in was 34, 9.34 because I was trying to short the 9.20s, uh, the low 9.20s. I remember shorting it all the way down. But then every time it touched nine, $9.10, there was a huge buy. Even though there was, there was the offer, it would get wiped out. It would get making these huge push up and then it will just collapse to nine dollars ten cents again and we've seen this before uh, this wasn't our first time having similar kind of setup you can see a descending triangle and this was the perfect setup for us and even better because this was coming out of a, of a downtrend huge downtrend tried to pull back retrace back but it but the stock kind of failed and there we go that's our setup right there so I did get in uh, short. I, I had initial probably tier one short from around 9.14, 9.12, 9.11, and right around here I could I got into my max position. I had tier four, but the only issue was on the way up. I was really uh, not sure how volatile this would be on the way up, and I felt like it could really give me a tough time trying to cover out my short position uh, because I had my I had my max position on that I wanted to get on the stock. I had all of the position around 9, 10 and a half uh, average price and I covered, I remember I covering about 9.03, 9.04 uh, on the way up on this one and there's so much more room and the stock just kept going back to the near the lows of the day which was 8.80. I, when, when I was getting into the position, I definitely had this target in my mind but at the same time I felt like if this stock doesn't go down right away and if it comes back there's a fair chance that I'll be break even on the trade and for that size I, I wasn't really willing to take a break even on this trade at this moment so um, next time I definitely want to put it put this down into my journal to much better these kind of setups and which is why I call this category as could have done better in this um, this is these were three categories and I hope uh, I hope there's something uh, different and exciting uh, that you got out of these trades a uh, lot of earnings that come out today. Facebook definitely you can see it's moving already after hours. Uh, we'll, we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, comment with your friends and uh, be in touch. I'll see you guys.